Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergaga.com and in this video we are going to be looking at the column from examples feature of Power Query and we will look at four awesome situations where it can come in helpful. So for this video, we are going to be using Power Query in Excel, but using the query editor in Power BI, the examples will work the same. Now I wanted to begin with a quick demonstration of what column from examples is for those of you coming into it for the first time. And I've got this simple list on screen of some names. If I click somewhere in the table, up to the data tab and then from table slash range. This is now loaded into the Power Query editor. And what column for examples is, is pretty much what it says on the tin. I'm going to give it an example of what I want in an additional column and it's going to pick up the pattern and do the rest for me and create that column. So I've only got one column here of names. It's already selected. I'm going to the add column tab on the ribbon and then column from examples. It's one of those buttons which has two halves to it, the top half and then the bottom half of the drop down list. And you can see we have the options for from all columns and then from selection. For this example of just one, it doesn't really make much difference. I'm clicking from selection and we now get this. At the top, it says I can enter sample values and control enter when I'm happy. So let's begin with entering. Now, in this example, I wanted the first initial and then the last name of the individual. So I'm going to type an M for Maria and immediately you can see column from examples try and predict what I'm after. It starts opening up with the name there. And it also comes up with 13 for the, the length of names. And it's trying to predict what I want. I'm now going to put a space and type Anders, the last name, and press enter. And nothing's happened. So it's not quite sure what I'm after yet. So let's try again. Next one is A for Anna, space, and then Trillo in there. Just double check I've typed it right. Press enter. And on that second example, you can see in the light gray, it's picked it up. And along the top, it's showing you the M code that it's used. And this is quite a difficult looking one. So thankfully, Connor from Examples is here for us to help. I can now do Control Enter or click the OK button to confirm that I'm happy with that and a step is added. Now let's look at some other brilliant reasons why column from examples is good to know. Okay, so we're in the Power Query editor here for this example, and we have an ID and we have a name. And the scenario is that the ID should be seven characters long. It's always seven characters in length. But the source that we've got this data from has ripped out the leading zeros, and this is what we're left with. So we want to create a fixed length ID. That column is already selected. It's up to add column, column from examples from selection. And I'm going to type in my first example. We can see the ID has five numbers. I want seven, so it's zero, zero, and then I'll type the number. One, eight, five, seven, four, press in enter, and it makes its first prediction. And you can see all it's done is put two leading zeros in front of all of the numbers. That's not quite what I'm after. Now I'm going to click on this one here, how many rows down is that? Six rows down, maybe. And this one's only got three digits, six, two, zero. So let's put in four zeros. One, two, three, four. 
620. Now when I press enter, it is on my wavelength. We have everything seven characters in length. Control enter to confirm. The step is added, the column is added, and then from here, I can do more to refine my query. Now in this example, I want to see how we can use Power Query to help us write complex formulas and also write some complex kind of M code for us. So the scenario is here that we've got some scores. And if somebody scores 90 or above, that is superb. And if they get 80 or above, that's great. 60 or above is good. Anything else is poor. So we've got this multiple conditional test to do. Now I'm going to select the score column. So I'm really dialing in to that specific column and helping column from examples work it out. And I'll make sure when I go to add column to use my drop down and save from selection. Don't get misled into thinking the names are somehow determining this grading system that we're going to do. It's all about the number. And I'll begin by typing superb because the first score of 94 is superb. 89, that is great. Okay, 45, that's poor. 85, we're back to great. And you can see it's really beginning to pick up this pattern now. Now, what I really want is one of the good ones. So let me move down to Martin here, because that is just good. It's between 60 and 80. OK, look at the code that's being written at the top. We have if it's 94 or above, superb. 85 or above is great. 64 or above is good. Anything else is poor. Now, that's not what we want, but the fact that it's written that framework for us to work with is all I needed. Either because maybe I don't know how to do this stuff without kind of examples, or maybe even if I did, I may find this faster to get off the ground. If I just click OK to confirm what they've done, that's going to add the step. And then I can use the formula bar above now just to tweak it to what I want. If you don't see this formula bar, then click on the view tab and there's a checkbox to bring it in from there. For me, I'm going to change 94 to 90, 85 to 80, 64 to 60, and then anything else is going to be poor. When I press enter, I now have that multi-conditional formula and it could have been a lot worse than that. So column from examples is great at writing any formula, not just these nested ifs, but creating some kind of calculating percentage or something you may not be comfortable doing. But if you get a couple of answers there, it's going to write that formula for you. In this example, we are looking at extracting text from a alphanumeric column or vice versa, it may be numbers from the alphanumeric column. For this example, it's text. We have a reference. It is an irregular string. It begins with numbers, text in the middle, ends with numbers. But all three parts of this string are irregular. Some of them begin with three numbers, some begin with two, some of them end with three numbers, some end with two. And then even the text in the middle, which we want, is anywhere from two to four characters long. And nobody really knows. So with that column selected, it's add column, column from examples, from selection. And we begin M-A-R for the first one. Pressing enter, it's certainly not got our pattern quite yet. Now the second one, A and A, same length for the text, but different length numbers on the end. Okay, we're getting closer. But now what I want to do is look through the examples and pick on one which is extracting some numbers. And you can take your pick here. There's this, this one down here, FR9. No, just FR. 
just want the text in the middle, press enter, and we have it. There we go. I can see all of those are correct, just the text. Control enter to confirm. We have our added step. And once again, column of examples to the rescue. At the top in the formula bar, you can see the M code which was created. And we can see a list that it's created in there for a 0 to 9, avoiding those numbers. So column from examples can really help improve our, our experience and our knowledge of M as well. For the last example, I wanted to see how column from examples can help us work with dates. So I have this date column for a date started. Let's select that, add column from examples selection, and we'll explore some of the options we have here. So for example, if I started to type the word week, immediately as you're typing, just like some of the previous examples, we can see it begin to make assumptions of our data and, and query what we're trying to do. So am I interested in the day of the week name or what the week number of the year is? All from this date started column. So I could choose day of the week right now from that list. And as easy as that, I've got whatever the day of the week is out of these columns. And we can see the code, the M code at the top, as mentioned, a great way of learning at some of these common functions we may be interested in. Control N to confirm that. But equally, if I came back and selected the date started column, went back in for another column from examples, there's loads of good stuff for us to do. If I started to type the word age, we can see it's picking up a formula for how many days uh, between the date started and today's date. Or if I started to type year, I can pick out whatever day of the year that is, or the quarter of the year. If I start to type month, then we have some useful options here. I can pull out the number or the name of the month. We've got the week number of the month. Maybe in this example, we'll find out how many days are in that month from the date started. I might need this kind of information for some kind of calculated, uh, some kind of calculation I'm going to do with this data. And here we have where it's 30 or 31 days and then uh, the odd month too. So they're just a couple of quick examples, but hopefully making a note of the list that was coming up as we were typing uh, with a variety of options for what we're going to do with dates. And over time, these options may be changing. So just because you see it now doesn't necessarily know what's going to happen next month, next year, three years from now. So I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of the other video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.